Hey now, welcome to episode 9.2 of Lone Star Mini Restoration. Uh, this episode is still kind of a follow-on of my engine overheating. Uh, I'm kind of at a standstill on my restoration until I order panels. Um, I've got to save up a little money to do that. So meanwhile, my this engine uh, overheated on me, left me stranded on the road. Um, and as a result of that, I am learning about the engine, finally. So um, today's episode is really about a mechanical uh, temp sensor. Uh, I'm, I'm breaking it down because I want to know. And hopefully it will be informative to somebody out there if maybe, if nothing else, maybe just a refresher course for many of you out there. Um, beautiful weather, so I pushed the mini outside because I love having the sunshine. I mean, I can see everything on the car. So, um, but yeah, so... Temp, mechanical temp sensor uh, is today, you know, and while I was looking over the car, I, I found this um, this small air hose or air filter, sorry, and it, it, I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but there's, there's a tube here. It goes right here on this tube, and this tube goes down to the top of the transmission case. Um, I don't, I, I don't know enough yet. I don't know enough to know why the transmission case or the lower block assembly would need an air filter. Um, but nonetheless, it's there. It somehow popped off because I found it when I was looking for the leak on this car. I found it down buried into the engine. Um, and I remember I looked at old pictures. Thank goodness I took pictures. I found old pictures and it goes right here on this tube. Um, so I'll be, I'll be re fixing that, replacing that, whatever. Um, but why in the world would a transmission need air? I, I, I don't know. Uh, but hey, so let's get on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tear this down. I, I'm going to tear um, and talk about what I've learned. And again, I hope that it helps somebody else. All right, let's get on it. So ever since my engine overheated, my temp sensor here on the inside of the car, as you can see here, is maxed out. The needle's pointing straight down. It went past 250, and once it went past 250, it just won't reset. Now, I've tried tapping it on the inside behind the dashboard, and it just won't let loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out, and since I may have to replace it anyways, I'm going to see if I can't fix it before I replace it, right? So um, now my next task uh, never have done before, and I know most of you guys have done this a million times, but I've got to take out the dash. So in, in order to get to that, that gauge, I've got to remove this dashboard, and I've never done that. So, yep, yeah, it's a wonderful learning curve today. After a little bit of uh, investigation, I found the following. Um, inside the fake glove box, I found wing nut screws back here up here and then on the other side that way and i believe if i take these off this dashboard may come out so um, that's what i'm going to try to do all right so okay so i I have the uh, dashboard loosened, and right now it's just leaning. Um, right now it's just leaning. I'm not going to pull it out entirely, but it was fairly simple. There were six studs. You can see one here. There were two on the left-hand side, um, two near the close to the center here, and then there were two over here on the right-hand side. Um, I did have to remove the um, the bezel to the uh, vent because that was holding it on, but I removed the two bezels and this thing just slid right out. So now, here's my temp sensor and I can see the back of it right here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to remove it and see if I can't play with it a little bit, but it has a wire. I'm guessing that wire is solely for lighting. For There must be a bulb there for night driving. Other, other than that, there shouldn't be a wire. Um, but look at all these Anyhow, look at this capillary line. It's like super long. It's like folded back on itself. Anyhow, all right, so yeah, now I'm going to take the, the uh, temp sensor gauge out of the dash.
Okay, so I freed the uh, the gauge from from the uh, panel, and now I have already I've I've actually already removed this um, because I wanted to drain it so that I wasn't making a mess here out on the driveway. So um, I have already removed it, but it takes a five eighths inch uh, wrench. Let me repeat that wrench, and uh, this guy comes out. And it shows what the tip of a mechanical temp center sensor looks like. Um, so yeah, so that's all it is. But now, if because I already took this out, cool it, pour it out of here. So if if anybody else does that out there, be mindful to put uh, buckets or a pan or, or towels or something under this because coolant is going to drain for sure. Um, so there's that in. So now. Pull it through the firewall and we'll look at it. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So the reason why you're hearing the name Burdon is because the mechanical um, temperature sensor is um, based on the Burdon tube system. So all this whole video is going to be talking about uh, Burdon tube and it's, it's what makes up the actual temp sensor, the mechanical uh, innards, if you will, of the temp sensor. Okay, hold everything. Um, who the heck is this Burdon guy? Burdon, Burdon, Burdon. Um, I don't, you know, who, who, who is he? So rather than letting this guy get lost in time and space, um, a little Doctor Who uh, input there. Uh, rather than letting him uh, get lost in time and space, uh, I looked him up. And the creator of the Burdon tube was a gentleman by the name of Eugene Burdon, born in 1804, died in 1884. He was a watchmaker. Uh, surprise, surprise. You know, think of the Burdon shape and the, the pressure and the needle turning like a watch. He was a watch, watchmaker slash engineer. Um, and back in 1840, there were a lot, well, 40s, 30s, there were a lot of... Um, Horrific deaths uh, caused in the locomotive industry where uh, I guess steam engines and whatnot were exploding and killing people. Well, he set out in 1840 to find a better uh, pressure, me pressure measuring device. And thanks to Eugene, he did the trick. Um, in fact, back then, and maybe more today, but back then, he succeeded to the point where they were measuring pressures in excess of uh, 100,000 PSI. Um, that's fantastic. So, and of course today his system is used in everything, automotive, all the way to locomotives, to refrigerators, um, all kinds of uh, pressurized systems. But uh, so yeah, Eugene Burdon, thank you very much for your um, innovation uh, back in the 1800s. And I didn't want to, you know, hey, I feel like I know you now. So Eugene, thank you, sir. My hat's off to you. All right, back to it. Ah, well, I definitely found, you know, I, I, I was kind of, um, I thought I was going to be showing a, a major mistake here because the way I handled this, this whole temperature gauge, you know, when I pried it, when I, when I pried it open, I broke the glass, of course, there was no way to get this off without prying the metal up, but um, I could have been a little bit more gentle at it. But, so what I found was that, look at this uh, Bourdon tube. This Bourdon tube is bent. See this crease right here? That means the temperature definitely got high enough. However, I mean, this, this Bourdon uh, tube should be curved. However, the fact that this is bent, that's why it wouldn't allow it to spring back. Um, 
you can see that this this link here when pressure when pressure comes through inside this coiled line here there's a very fine copper tube um, in this copper tube is some gas that expands with heat now I don't exactly know what that gas is um, however it, when it expands it comes up comes up and pushes this uh, Bourdon tube here is actually um, well it's a tube it, it's it's capped off at this end over here and pressure comes up and as, as it heats up it expands and wants to go flat this I can't right now because it's pinched it's pinched right here um, I guess that was caused from the overheating but normally it's a nice arc around here that's definitely faulty and I need to replace it so I will but before I do I'm going to cut this line I'm going to cut this tube along with the capillary tube because I want to see if there's a gas in there or if there's a liquid Very strong smell. Um, yeah, it's a chemical smell. Um, I'm a, I'm guessing that was a gas in there because nothing there's nothing pouring out, and it's a pretty strong smell. So here's the little cool the cool little. I'm gonna cut that off. All right, so. Here's our little mechanism. So I've separated the little gear uh, from the Bourdon tube. And you can see this is where the Bourdon attaches to this end here. Um, and as the Bourdon tube expands or contracts, it pulls on that gear in there. I don't know if you can see. Let me try to spin this the right way. There are some really fine teeth along this little gear right there, right there. And then inside here, there's another pinion gear. Let me see if I can turn it. Inside, you see that little pinion gear, um, that little pinion gear right in there. And of course, that is the spoke for the needle. So as the Bourdon tube expands and contracts, it will pull, push and pull this gear, which in turn hits the pinion gear, which in turn uh, spins the needle. The needle's right there on the end of that guy. That's how a mechanical temp sensor works, and I think it's quite cool. So there you have it, mini folk. Uh, I don't know if that was educational for you as it was for me. Um, perhaps maybe it was just a refresher for you, but for me it was uh, a great learning experience. You know, it's one small step closer uh, that I am of understanding how my Mini and everything um, in my Mini, how my Mini runs. So today was Eugene Bourdon and um, how that works. I'm going to ask my daughter how to pronounce that, see if I'm even close or if I'm totally bu butchering it. For anybody French out there, I apologize, especially if your last name is Bourdon. Um, but there you have it. So now I'm going to be replacing my temperature sensor, and I will replace it with mechanical because I'm quite fond of this, especially now that I know how it works. I'm going to go back. I'm going this route. I, I like it. So, hey, thanks for watching, and you guys, are, you guys, gals, whomever out there, you have a fabulous day. Um, right. Wait, something else that... Uh, was a wonderful surprise for me today. And uh, Dave Jaguar 66, um, I am honored, sir. Seriously, uh, on a serious note, I'm very honored. Um, I received a package in the mail today. Um, I wasn't expecting anything, and so I raised an eyebrow thinking, what the heck? But it says, by airmail. Um, it's kind of a Christmas, ah, it's not Christmas, but maybe kind of Christmas wrapper, sort of, kind of. So I'm gonna open it here. Uh, what does this say in the back? It says, part of the 
divinely different package packaging range. Um, let's see. Let's see what it is. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Dave Jaguar is seen on YouTube. Dave Jaguar 66 as seen on YouTube. Wow. Uh, seriously, I am like I am. I I feel like I'm the new guy to the community. And uh, how did I get? How did I get honored? Uh, blessed. Wh whatever the heck you want to say. Hashtag honored. Uh, that I got a hashtag Dave Jaguar 66 shirt. Um, wow. That's pretty doggone cool. Thank you, Dave. Uh, very much appreciated. Um, yeah, Dave, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am honored. And to everybody else, thank you for watching this episode of Lone Star Mini, Mini Restoration. Uh, I hope it was um, good for you like it was good for me. And uh, <laughs> uh, all right, bye just now.